how do you add markers into Descript, and why would you even want to? Let's take a look. We're inside Descript, and I'm using Descript on the web. The interface is the same. There's a few minor differences in functionality compared to the desktop version, but I find the web version to be a little bit faster at doing things than the desktop version, so that's what I'm using. I'm inside a project. This happens to be a video composition. So I've got my transcript over here on the left. I've got my preview on the right. And down here I have my timeline, which I don't know why, but Descript insists on having that closed by default. I don't know who can edit in Descript without ever looking at the timeline. Never works for me. Anyway, I digress. Markers come in handy for a couple of things. One way I like to use them is to keep track of where I'm at. If I'm cruising along here, I'm making changes in my transcript and tidying things up on the timeline, and I'm going along and going along, and the dinner bell rings, and I'm right about here, what I'll do is I'll add a marker that says resume editing here. To add a marker, you just come up into the script wherever. I, of course, went between these paragraphs and hit the enter key so that I got a fresh new line. I'll go ahead and delete one of those. And then you add a pound sign, which is shift and three on my keyboard. I assume it's the same on yours. You get something there that says marker. Now this is not gonna be read in. It doesn't add audio. You're not adding to the script. Because you added the pound sign, you told it, I'm putting a marker here that's not part of the audio. Once it says marker, you can change the name to whatever you want. So now I've got this little spot, and if I close this project, if I open it up somewhere else, open it up in the desktop app, open it up back here, it's probably going to take me to the beginning, and I can't remember where I left off. So if I look over here on the left, I see I've got this resume editing, and if I click that, it takes me right to it, and now I can pick up right where I left off without having to hunt and find my place. You can also use markers as you're going through and you're doing your editing, and you realize maybe at this point you want to put in a screenshot. But right now you're in the zone on editing the transcript. You don't want to shift gears and go hunt down your screenshot, get it put in full with that, and then go back to editing the voiceover. So that'd be a great place to just go ahead and hit the pound sign, make your note whatever you want, add screenshot of homepage, and then it pops out to you here on the scene rail on the left that you got a spot here where you said you want to do something. Right there is where I want to add that screenshot of the homepage. Another handy dandy way to use markers is as the chapters for your video or audio. Because they'll be time stamped and in some applications they're even automatic. Let's take a look at that. All right, so I'm just gonna come through here randomly and put a couple of chapter markers in. I'll hit the pound sign and say chapter one. I'll come down a little bit further. This is not in any real order, by the way. I'll do a pound sign, chapter two. Scroll down a bit more, pound sign, chapter three. What do you think, a fourth chapter? Yeah, why not? It'll probably be a really long one, but we'll do it anyway. Pound sign, chapter four and I would name these chapters something more meaningful if it were for anything other than demonstration purposes. In my case, this video that I'm editing is talking about removing the background from images in Leonardo AI, and I demonstrate how you access that function from the different places in Leonardo because the buttons don't exactly look the same and they're not in the same place. So maybe my chapter one is background removal from the image generation page. Chapter two is accessing background removal from the personal feed. Chapter three is from the community feed. And chapter four is, I don't know, whatever else, whatever other place we accessed it from. So we've got my chapters in there. That's great. What does it do for me? Well, when we go to export, which is up on the upper right hand screen, if we hit publish and then we hit export, if we export as a video, we come down here to the metadata, you'll see we have include markers as chapters turned on. So in some platforms, it's gonna pick up on those chapters automatically. Now, not YouTube, you have to put your chapters in manually. But this is still handy because if we switch over here and say export transcript, so you've exported your video, it's all good to go. You've got your markers in here and we say export and transcript. We have lots and lots of options to pick from, including include markers. So we can include those markers in our transcript. We can also come down here to time codes and make sure that we are getting time codes for our markers so that the time is right next to the marker. Then when you go to upload your YouTube video, you've got this transcript that has every single marker, every single chapter with its time code right next to it. So you don't have to hunt through the video and find the timing for your chapter. You can go right from the transcript that has the markers time coded. 
here's what the text file of that transcript looks like, and there's our marker and our timestamp. So when it's time to upload our YouTube video, we don't have to play through that video and find the spots where our chapters need to be set. We can just scan through here. We've got the exact time and whatever we called it. But pay attention to this. It's putting every marker in there. So resume editing here. Remember how I did that to keep track of where I was? Yeah, you wanna go back and take that out. Otherwise, it's gonna show up here. Now, it's not a big deal if you're using this transcript just to figure out where your chapters are for YouTube because obviously you're gonna skip over this. But when we export the video, if we have this metadata include markers as chapters turned on, it's gonna get included in the video metadata. Some platforms may use that. Audio, it's the same situation. Under metadata, you have the same include markers as chapters. And so those markers will get picked up. For instance, the podcast that I do with my brother. I didn't realize that these markers were doing anything. I was just using them to write resume editing here when I was in the middle of editing the podcast and needed to go do something else. Until one day he asked me, hey, what's this thing that pops up this chapter that says resume editing here when the podcast is playing? Apparently the podcast platforms are picking that up and putting it in as chapters. So all of our listeners, if they happen to be looking at the app, saw that we had our podcast in chapters that were pretty much all called resume editing here. So once you're all done editing, you probably want to go back and take out these notes to yourself. Now, if for some reason you'd rather not use the pound sign, or maybe you just can't remember that it's shift and three. If you just come create a new line between any two paragraphs, I'll just hit enter right there. Over on the right, you have this little bookmark looking deal. It's an add marker. So you can click that and you'll get a marker that's just named marker. And then you can just double click on the marker and rename it to whatever you want. If we're doing an audio only composition, maybe we're working on an audio book or an audio only podcast, you can still use markers. If we scroll down, you'll see that they're still in there, but they're not quite as handy because you don't have the scene rail over on the left that shows you where they are. Now, if you're really into keyboard shortcuts, like way more than I even am, you can navigate using keyboard shortcuts from one marker to another. To go to the next marker, you'd use control alt period. And to go to the previous marker, control alt comma. There's no way in the world I'm gonna remember that. But maybe that'd be handy for you. And that's how to use markers in Descript. I hope you found this helpful and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.